30 some odd year residents of the community. Uh, your position may well be known, I'm just not familiar with it, so forgive me, but uh, the casinos on Delaware Avenue, which I have been watching with horror, yep. with it going back and forth. What has been your role and position in this? We, Delaware Avenue, like it or not, is our primary shopping area for Center City. It means that we don't have to go out to King of Prussia, and we don't have to go to Cherry Hill. People shop big box, that's where we go. You cannot get down Delaware Avenue right now on a Saturday. It is gridlock. Now, they are proposing putting a major casino down there, which from my standpoint has been thrust down our throat, but who protects the interests of the community? Who deals with the adverse impact of this? What has been your position on this? Because as far as I can see or hear, it's going through, and yet everyone I speak to locally is adamantly opposed on a number of, for a number of reasons. What, what has been your position and involvement in this? Thank you. I, like many Philadelphians, did not anticipate the greed of the casino industry. People who like to call themselves gaming, but they're gamblers. And I think that is true of the entire city. I did not really think, and nor did anybody else who voted for that bill, and I did, that these casinos would want to build things that are huge. They were like Vatican City. They're like, they're enormous. I have been fighting that along with the neighborhoods that are, I did vote for it. I mean, it's on the record, you can find it. So how'd you fight for it? I am a plaintiff in a number of suits that would discourage their participation, make it more difficult for them to get licenses. I have been speaking with neighborhood groups, encouraging them. I have been on legislation which has not been able to get passed, but which I voted for and put my name on, which would make it more difficult for these groups to go ahead and to ignore the neighbors. It is a very long fight. I am not ready to give it up. I will continue to fight this. In Gettysburg, there is no casino. And why? Because they were ahead of us in Philadelphia, and they started this as soon as the governor started to talk about casinos. We did not do that in Philadelphia. That is a collective problem which we can save, and we will save. You can't blame one person. Well, you can, but it is not one person's fault. And um, we need to work together and make sure that these things don't take. Oh, we had good news about Foxwoods today. The, the gaming um, control board is, gave them 30 days to do everything that they should have done long ago. And I think they're not going to be able to, and I think we're going to be in a better position with them. Now I'd like to see us get in the same position with Sugar House. Great. We're going to go to closing statements. Actually. Sure. Babette, you just said that you're not in favor of these casinos, and then you admitted that you voted in favor of them. How can you have it both ways? I, I mean, I think I'm actually the only candidate that can have it both ways in this race. But um, in, in, in all seriousness, and I'm going to refer to my notes on this one. I'm, I'm going to refer to my notes on this one. In 2006, Babette Joseph voted in favor of slots. In 2008, she voted, she favored a measure to allow voters to decide if they wanted them in their neighborhoods. And she also supported a measure that would prevent casinos being built near residential property. But that bill didn't pass. And then in 2009, you voted for table games. I think we need legislation, we need to favor legislation that will give more control to the local municipalities where these casinos are built now that it's already been passed. And we need to make sure that the revenue that's coming from these casinos gets reinvested in the surrounding communities. Okay, take a breath and you're gonna to go to your closing statement. Okay. Three minutes for your closing statement. Um, I do wanna thank everyone for coming out tonight. I wanna to thank the Gershman Y. I wanna thank the many uh, community and civic associations that actually put this all together.
we need fresh leadership in Harrisburg. We need fresh leadership, frankly, on many levels of our government. And that's what I am trying to provide. I have been running a clean campaign. I have been knocking on doors. I have been talking to voters. And I think people are frustrated with the gridlock that we see in Harrisburg right now. And I don't think it's far different from what we've seen in recent years, but people are noticing it now because people are struggling in a number of capacities. They can't afford their health care, their cost of living has gone up, all these challenges that they're facing. And simply put, I want to offer our district and our community here a new direction. We've had the same representative for the past 25 years. And you should be applauded for a lot of the things that you have accomplished. But I think it's really time that we go in a new direction. And that has been my message. My campaign website, gregkravitz.com, has many detailed policy initiatives that show what we actually can do. And I said in my opening remarks, I'll say it again. I challenge each of you to consider the potential for, fra for fresh leadership in Harrisburg. And if you stand with me in a few weeks on May 18th and you vote your conscience, then I promise you when I'm in Harrisburg, I will stand with you and I will always vote my conscience. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at a rare bird. I am a liberal, I say that word with pride. I am a progressive, I am, an, I am a feminist, and I have power. And I use that power to move these issues forward. When I held hearings, in my, gov my state government committee on a bill which would give equal rights across the state to lesbian, gays, transgendered, and bisexual people, that was the first time there was an official state committee hearing on a positive LGBT issue. And I moved forward also the bill in committee this session, the same bill which would give uh, freedom from discrimination to this community. I got it voted out of committee and that was the first time that ever happened in this General Assembly. I am working on issues like divestment. I talked about it a little bit. There is no reason why Pennsylvania's public funds should go to countries like the Sudan, like Iran, like Iraq. I want to make sure that doesn't happen. And working with the Republicans in the Senate and with State Senator Mike, Flick, Mike Stack, we will make that happen in the very near future. I stand up for the environment, I am one of 13 people in the state assembly, in the House, who have a 100% environmental record as recorded by Penn Environment, which did that survey um, last session. I am very strong and able to move forward on gun control. I work with ceasefire. I was endorsed by ceasefire. That's a significant public safety issue that needs to be addressed. And I see that we are moving forward in that area as well. I am very grateful to the voters of the 182nd District for sending me back time after time after time to do work which is important to all of us which represents our shared values in Harrisburg. I love my job passionately. I ask you to send me to Harrisburg again. Thank you so much for coming out tonight.